I think a lot of folks get those things misconstrued. Not quite sure what they mean. I'm pretty sure they have never looked those words up in their life, probably. Anybody watching right now, I bet you have not looked up those words. I bet you have not parsed those words. In all my years of teaching this and studying and things like that, that's generally the case. But most, folk, most folks, they do not look anything up. They just don't. How do I know that? When I'm having a conversation with someone, I will literally ask them, did you look it up? And they'll be like, oh, no. <laughs> so they don't put the work in. And then they wonder why, you know, they don't have closure on the grammar. They're not making progress because they're not putting the work in. And I'm not here trying to browbeat anybody. I can't force people to work. Or do the research, you know, that's not what I'm about. It's up to you to do it yourself, to find things out. That's what led me to where I am, my curiosity. So again, the quality, length, breadth, and depth of this workshop depends upon you, the viewer. If you ask in-depth, insightful, intelligent questions, that's the type of content you're going to get out of it. What you put in is what you get out. If you ask some stupid ass shit, then you're going to get some stupid ass shit back. It's just how it works. Pardon my language. No, seriously, pardon my language. I, I said that to me. You know, I don't use those types of words very often at all. I do not. But when I do, I do it for an effect. And, and that wasn't for an effect right there. That was for a result. Those of you out there that use those types of words on a daily basis every day, and that's like part of your vocabulary, every third word. All I can say about that is one of uh, a teacher I had once told me that what comes out of your mouth is a direct reflection of the inner state of your being. And that's, I'll leave it there. I will leave it there. So there you go. Go ahead and ask your questions. Say hi. Say what's up. Show that you're not afraid. You're not scared. You're not intimidated. Show you got something to say. Hi, quadruple A. What's going on? I'm going to answer your question that you asked the other day, whether it was yesterday or the day before, I can't remember what, when you asked the, the question, if a vowel in front of a consonant means no, then how can there word, be words like of, is, are, and, uh, and things like that in correct sentence structure. All right. And I offered to you a place for closure. I said, you can go study the, the Parse playlist if you want to, or the correct sentence structure playlist if you want to, because the answers are all there. If you want to put in the effort and the study time, I myself, if I had to put a number on it, I'm well over 30,000 hours. Like I do this every day, and I did it every day when I first started in 2017, 10 to 12 hours a day. That's how serious I was about it. And I was. I didn't want to ask anybody any questions. I wanted to learn it myself. 
And so I went to the very brink of how far I could take something, how far in depth I could learn something. And when I exhausted all possibilities, then I asked a question. That's how I navigate. But I don't want to project those things on anybody else. I know, no, I know not everybody is like me. I couldn't find the video. Well, there's multiple videos, bro. Multiple videos. More than one video. You just have to go go into it. You just have to go into studying. Or, of course, you can do a workshop. Those that are the most serious about it, that really, 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 truly want to learn the grammar, will take a workshop. They will make it work. They will make it a priority. Just saying. So... Uh, here's the thing also. Hey, you know what? Maybe, uh, maybe April can answer your question. I don't know if April knows the answer or not. I would think that she would know the answer, uh, but, uh, I I'll ask her to answer the question in chat and then I'll come back and check and see what happened. So quadruple A wants to know if a vowel in front of a consonant means no and is no contract and is a particle of negation, then how can we use words like of, for, is, are, and, and, or in correct sentence structure, which are all words that start with a vowel in front of a consonant. How can we use those words in correct sentence structure if those are particles of negation how does that work? If you could answer that question for me, April, and then put it in the chat. If you know the answer, if you don't know the answer, that's fine too. Uh, but I think you know the answer because I know we went over this in workshops. Uh, she's very good at the grammar, by the way. So I'm gonna I'm gonna step away for a second, well, a, a few moments, and come back and, and check and see if she put the answer in the comments. Thank you. The question is, if a vowel in front of a consonant is a particle of negation and it means no, then how can you have words like for, of, well, I mean for in the fiction, if you syntax an adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, it's future tense. So it's a particle of negation. So I'm, I'm throwing that one in there as well. But of, or, and, is, are. How can you use those words if a vowel in front of a consonant is a particle of negation. So, so what is it that I always say? And I've said from day one, if you listen very carefully to the words that come out of my mouth, what do I say about correct sentence structure and particles of negation? One would not use a particle of negation in a fact. You can go back through the videos. I say it ad nauseum. We do not use particles of negation in our facts. Now, of course, there are exceptions to that. When we're using correct sentence structure and we type out the word adverb, adjective, pronoun, we usually sick those words simply because you don't want to come up with a brand new word for the word adverb. Why? Why? You're just going to confuse things because it's all about the ease of communication and simplifying things with correct sentence structure. So for the most part, when you create a dictionary, you would not use particles of negation in your facts. Can we all agree on that? That is what I said from day one. I've never deviated from that. We do not use particles of negation in our facts. I have literally given you enough data to answer your own question, quadruple A, just by what I just said. We do not use particles of negation in our facts. That answers the question. Then how can we use, how can we use words like of, and, is, or? Correct, because positionals and lodials are not facts. We have credentialed them, and given given them their function. We have assigned the function to them. They are not functioning as facts. They function as positionals. They function as lodials. That's how it works. 
So in correct sentence structure, when you use your dictionary, you create those terms. You give closure to what they mean. Now, quadruple A says, says, but they are particles of negation. But it's not a fact, is the point I'm making. It's not a fact. So in my dictionary, the way I contract, I give closure to all of these things. And this is what I've been teaching for the last six plus years. It's what was taught to me by David Wynn Miller, by Foucault and Raven, blah, blah, so on and so forth. If you give closure to the terms and conditions you're using, and you can prove those things with the continuance of the evidence, which I have, 900 plus videos, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now you have your biosphere. Other people can come in and they can learn it. They can use it. Oh, crap. I think I muted myself. Okay, there we go. Now, quadruple A, if you don't agree with what I'm saying, if you don't think that what I'm giving is closure, if you don't think that I'm giving a plausible continuance of the evidence, that's fine. But now you have to present something as a solution for rule one, rule, one, rule equal, because that's what I've done. I have a problem, fiction grammar. I have a solution, correct sentence structure. Now you're saying that you have a problem. Well, you're not saying that, but you're implying you're doubting what I'm saying, which is perfectly understandable because you don't have closure under grammar. You don't really have a, your position is not solidified. You've never probably ever used it in a practical situation. You've never been put on the spot. You've never had to do these things. So I understand why you would question it. And it's okay to question things. But if you're going to question things, you have to be willing to do what it takes to get the closure. And so far, you haven't done any of that. So by that, I mean, you at least have to take one workshop. to at least be open to these things, or you have to invest hours and hours of study of this channel the way April has. But I've just given you closure as to why you can use a vowel in front of a consonant in a positional or a lodial, because they are not facts. They are not fact-based. They are not tangible. Correct sentence structure is about facts. In the same way that numbers, now this brings the mathematical interface into it. In the same way that numbers are tangible, they're constant. The signs like plus, minus, multiplication, division, those are like intangibles. So you got your tangibles and your intangibles. That's the way these concepts work. If you are not participating with that logic, I mean, that's your choice. But you have to also be able to present a solution to the perceived problem for rule one, rule equal. Because if you don't have a solution, then it's just the sound of one hand clapping. And you don't have a position to say anything really except mitigating in a comments field. All right. I have not looked at the comments. I'm going to look at the comments to see what uh, you folks have said. So Lodi can have part of the enclosure. But I'm struggling with myself. To let it make sense to my cognition, haha. I don't have closure, that's right. It will make sense in due time. It takes time and many, many hours, but well worth it. I'm beginning to understand a sense of cognition just got over me. That's right. Anybody can do this. Anybody, if I can do it, you can do it. Bottom line, I'm a very slow learner. If I can do it, you most certainly can do it. When I was learning this in 2017, I mean, I was ready to chuck it all out the window. I was just ready to say, F it. I would get so angry and so mad at times and so frustrated. But I'm certainly glad that I stuck with it. Shantavia Trot says, what are your thoughts on sharing dictionary? What dictionary are you talking about sharing? Um, because here's the thing about sharing dictionaries. If you use someone else's dictionary, you're giving jurisdiction to them for your grammar. 
if that's your volition, if you want to give someone else authority over your grammar, then why don't you just use Webster's or something like that, right? It's all a choice. Okay, so I was wondering about the grammar flag. To the people who don't know, it's the 1 by 1.9 grammar flag. It will be recognized as the American flag. Can I use any other flag as a grammar flag? Well, I can't tell you what you can do and what you can't do. Okay? But what I can say is there is one grammar flag. It's the 1 by 1.9 grammar flag. One minute, please. Apologies for that. I've got a couple foster kittens running crazy in here. Knocking plants over and whatnot. All right, so the question. Can I use any other flag as a grammar flag? There is one grammar flag. It's the 1 by 1.9 Title IV flag with the stars and stripes. Period. End of story. If you, quadruple A, feel so inclined, you can create your own grammar and create your own grammar flag if you want to. But the kicker is, are other people going to participate with it? That's the thing. To say the people who don't know it's the grammar flag it will be recognized as the American flag. That's quite an assumption. How do you know that? Because I have used the one by one by one point nine grammar flag in many venues, in many places, and I've never been questioned on it. Ever. So what is your personal experience with that? Have you had someone in a situation like that in a foreign vessel in dry dock say that, oh, that's the American flag? Because I've never had it happen to me. I'm not saying it couldn't happen to you or it didn't, but I'm saying in my own personal experience, over six plus years of using this stuff in and out of foreign vessels and dry dock and different ports and quays and docks and things like that, I've never had anyone question the validity of the grammar flag especially when I'm there and I'm able to give them closure on the grammar itself. So the answer to your question flat out is no. I mean, if you're going to say, may I use any other flag as a grammar flag? Well, if you create your own grammar, then yes, you can use whatever you want. But as far as correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax grammar goes, the answer is no. Absolutely not. I would never condone nor endorse anyone doing anything like that because it's always safety first. You got to know what you're doing. Shantavia, that is great because creating your own dictionary is the basis of your whole construct. That's what governs your entire construct is your dictionary. My dictionary has about 2,000 words in it. All written in correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. It has a styles manual. It's a complete uh, document that governs all of my correct sentence structure contracts. Now, of course, when I create a document contract postal vessel court venue, I don't put the whole dictionary in there. I only put in the words, the facts that I use in the dictionary. I mean, in the document, I, I only give closure to those words that are specifically in the document. For example, if you create a, a correct claim of the live life, all the facts that are in your claim of the live life would be included in a dictionary with it for closure. Because that's what this is. This is a grammar of closure. You wouldn't need to include words that you don't use. It's like if I ask you to go to the grocery store, am I going to give you a list of all the things I want? Or am I going to give you a list of all the things I don't want? What sounds reasonable to you?
anyone who's taking workshops out there or in the process of taking workshops, what I can tell you is the workshops will progress to match your knowledge level. There are some folks that, for whatever reason, can take six workshops, but they still really have not progressed past the first two for whatever reason. And then there are some folks that can take six workshops and they're, boom, they're like in the stratosphere with this stuff. And to meet that, it challenges me to come up with more challenging material and content uh, to keep them learning. But thus far, no one has challenged the length and breadth of my knowledge. And, and I'm not saying that to brag or anything like that at all. I say this with all humility, that I would certainly welcome anyone out there who would challenge the length and breadth of my knowledge. Because if you reach a point where my knowledge is limited and I cannot answer your questions or I don't know where to go, then I would defer to my tutor, Colon Raven. So there's like an there's there's infinite amount of knowledge you can get from this stuff. And it's available to you as long as Raven and I are still here physically. It's just up to you folks out there to take advantage of it and do what you need to do uh, to participate with this stuff and learn it. Rule one, rule equal. What you put in is what you get out. Would we include flag mechanics, postal mechanics, and banking mechanics in the dictionary? How would we learn those? Well, the most important thing, Shantavia, is learning the grammar. And as I've said in other videos, which you may not have seen, because I think you may be new here. Hold on a minute. I, I want to find out who you are. I apologize too, Shantavia, because I mean, I, I get, I talk to a lot of people. But I just want to see if we've done any kind of uh, consultation, at least, or anything like that. I want to look at my own records and see if I know you, who you are. Shantavia Trot. Ah, okay. All right, I know who you are now. You have not taken any workshops. You requested a test contract, which I sent, but I have not heard back from you on that. So, okay, so I know who you are. Um, first, you would get closure on the grammar. And I would have to certify that. If I'm the one that's going to teach you these things, I would have to certify that you have closure on the grammar. And you would do that through the test, of course. Which, I mean, if you want to take the test, Sean Tavia, that's completely up to you. But at this point, I would highly recommend taking a workshop or two before you take the test. Because I'm pretty sure just knowing what I know from the consultation and things like that, you're probably not going to pass the test. Probably not. I'm not trying to rain on your parade or not. I'm being straightforward with you. All right. If I were you, I would either do more studying of the 900 free videos on this channel, you know, take another few months or whatever and do that, or invest in the workshops, take one or two workshops, and then that would take months of study off the table, and you'd be able to get done in, in a week or two what you would get done in a few months on your own, and then take the test. Because once you, once I can certify that you can safely use this grammar, you have closure on it, and you have enough skill to be able to articulate that to another contract party under duress, I would be more than happy to teach you flag mechanics, postal mechanics, and banking mechanics. Because there are workshops for those too. I'm more than happy to share those things with people. But they have to have a grammar foundation. Okay. 
you have to be able to safely navigate with these things, at least for me. I mean, there are other folks out there that are just about whatever, making money, and they're more than happy to take your money and show you stuff that's going to get you in trouble. I'm not one of those people. I'm very, very cautious. I do not want to be the reason that somebody winds up in prison. Let's put it that way. It's all about rule one, rule equal. What you put in is what you get out. Don't I need my own flag on my own documents? Quadruple A, what are you talking about? I really don't know what you're talking about there. Don't you need your own flag? What do you mean by that? I mean, I don't know what you need or you don't need. I'm not one to say that because I don't know you. I don't know you at all. I can tell you from my own personal experience that I use a one by 1.9 grammar flag, Title IV flag, on my correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, document, contract, postal vessel, core venues. It's not my flag. All right. For me, from my perception, it is an open source flag that anyone can use if they have closure on the grammar. If they know what they're doing, they can use the flag safely. I've been doing it for six plus years with no issues, no problems, and 100% success. If you don't know the grammar, I would highly recommend not using it, not using that flag. I would highly recommend not using correct sentence structure. If you don't have closure on it, why would you use something you don't know anything about? Right? Or you're not sure of. Doesn't make sense. Uh, but as far as you need your own flag on your own documents, I mean, that's up to you. However you want to do things, man, whatever floats your boat. If it makes you feel good to create your own flag and use it on your documents, great. Go ahead and do it. In adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. But if you're going to use correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, that Title IV flag must be in the upper port side corner with the correct ratio above and beyond everything else because that takes jurisdiction over everything that follows. If you want to put your own little flag that you create for your own self or your own family crest or whatever it is, you would put it under there if you want to. But nothing comes before the grammar flag if it's a correct sentence structure document because if you put something else above the grammar flag now it's not a correct sentence structure contract now it's something else it's very simple logic very 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 simple think about it think about how contract works think about the order of operations right down to the four of with by very very simple CSS is not CSS without the one by 1.9 flag. That is correct. In the document contract postal vessel court venue setting. If you use postal mechanics, meaning you put a stamp in the upper starboard side corner, you autograph over the stamp, and you write in the style of quantum grammar, but you don't put the one point one by 1.9 flag up in the port side corner, it's not a correct sentence structure document. Again, to me, this is this is very simple logic. It may not be such to you because you've never used it. And you don't know the grammar. So that's why these things are theoretical to you. And maybe you're, I mean, you're coming at it from a fiction mindset, I'm guessing. But the only way this, this shit is going to make sense to you is if you take a workshop, if you start actually learning it, buckling down and learning it. But this is, I guess, is a good uh, first step right here, being in this chat and asking these questions. I don't know what I don't know. Haha. <laughs> well, the same could be said for everybody, right? I don't know what I don't know. Someone asked a, uh, asked a question the other day. Uh, let me see if I can find it. You know, I really wish that I could share my screen on here because YouTube does give you the capacity 
to share your screen. However, every time I do it, I lose audio or something screwed up happens. So I don't want to wreck the stream by trying to share my screen. So the comment I want to talk about is someone commented on my Romley Stewart video, the Coral Blade Gr uh, Grotto Broadcast 7, where I did a reaction to Romley Stewart's grammar claims. And this individual, his name was Don Campbell. They say, what makes these books fiction? Meaning, what makes a fiction book a fiction book? And the answer is quite simple to someone who is mildly familiar with correct sentence structure in that those books are written in adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. There are no facts in those books in a grammatical sense because there are no position lodial fact phrases. The mathematical interface is not used in those books, and that's what makes those books fiction. We are talking about, in the context of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. All right, put a little poll up there with three options. Why won't Romley Stewart take you up on your offer of a free workshop? Now, this was years ago, folks. This was years ago, but I did offer Romley uh, a consultation. I did offer to meet him on a geometric level playing field of communication, i.e., video, Zoom communication where he could ask me whatever he wants to and I'd be more than willing to put on a 60-minute workshop for him to introduce him to correct sentence structure, but he wanted nothing to do with it. Uh, he was actually very... Uh, how can we say it? Very dismissive. Which I've found is the case in a lot of those folks. They don't know about something, so they automatically dismiss it and ridicule it. Like they think that a mathematical interface on grammar can be grasped in a few short minutes, and then they can just dismiss it. I mean, whatever. That's up to... Uh, that's up to them. It's, you know, it's all a choice. But you would think someone that is so educated about the fiction system, you would think that they would cognize and see the value in a mathematical interface on grammar that is completely 100% given closure to with the continuance of the evidence in several different places. For those of that caliber of intelligence to at least grasp that, wow, there is something here, which is what I did in 2017. I was like, man, I know there's something here. I can see it. I don't understand it right now, but it's there. And so that's what galvanized me into learning it. So it's hard for me to believe that a guy like that would just dismiss something like that. So that makes me think, that makes me very suspicious of that guy and his intentions. It really, really, really does. So far, no one has chosen he's a fiction system agent. That that thought has no, didn't enter into anyone's mind. That's that's hilarious. <laughs> I'm not saying he is or, or, or anything like that, folks. But <laughs> that's just funny that no one. Uh, No one chose that. Who is Romley Stewart? Well, let's Google it. Let's find out who he is. Google is a wonderful tool. Romley Stewart. 
The Justinian Deception. Volume 1. Okay, that doesn't say who he is. Um, let's put in who is Romley Stewart. Who is Romley Stewart? All right, so we got to get creative. Romley Stewart biography. It looks like we don't have a biography for this, this person. Very interesting. Interesting. So no one knows who Romley Stewart is, actually. Isn't that interesting? That in and of itself is a red flag. Romley Stewart and the Justinian Deception. Romley has really walked his talk. He is one of the few who have actually renounced all forms of government-issued ID. Who's saying this? Someone named Dante. Who the hell is Dante? All right, so we don't even know who Dante is, but he expects us to believe what he's saying here, right? Folks, that's the first thing I look for, all right? You may be different, but me, I look for credentials. If someone's making claims, automatic, I, I look, who is this person? Do they use their face the way I'm using my face? Do they use a correct name, at least an adjective, adjective, pronoun name? their real name, or do they use a goofy internet nom de guerre? Do they step up into the light to the best of their knowledge and skill and present themselves as a tangible source? Or do they try and hide and be deceptive and be anonymous? Because anyone who tries to hide and be deceptive and be anonymous is someone 9.9 .9 times out of 10 that cannot prove any of their claims, and it's all bullshit. I have found this to be the case. People get so wrapped up in the things that uncredentialed folks say, that anonymous folks say, and then they think that, oh, this is what's going to happen. Goofiness, complete goofiness from my perception. So anyways, this guy is saying uh, 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 Romley has really walked his talk. Is that right? Whoever you are, Mr. No Name, Dante. So you expect us to believe what you're saying about someone. Someone we know nothing about is making claims about someone we know nothing about. Big surprise. Fiction System 101. He is one of the few who have really renounced all four. How do you know that? Where's your proof? Do you know this guy personally? How can you even prove that? Uh, such as social security numbers, driver's license, bank accounts, passport. Okay, so you're saying that Romley Stewart is able to feed himself, feed his family, maintain a property with no bank account? <laughs> Okay. Where did where does Romley Stewart live? Narnia? <laughs> oh goodness, I've I've had enough of that. I'm I'm good on that. Once the logic goes out the window, 
I'm following with it. There's no point in me even going any further with that. I'm not saying it's not possible to exist in this on this earth without a bank account. What I'm saying is it's highly improbable and unlikely that anyone could actually do that. Okay? And if you disagree with what I'm saying, prove it. Give me a name that I can certify who they are, where they live, that this is a live being navigating with no bank account, living with a family on a property with no static, no problems, nothing. Show me it. Give me the proof. Because you can't and you won't i'm not someone to say what someone can or can't do but i'm pretty confident about what i'm saying here that's the beauty about that's the beauty of correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar getting closure on this grammar and knowing the mechanics of salvage knowing the mechanics of maritime salvage claims the grammar comes first, folks. If you learn the grammar, you get closure on that, and I can certify that you know the grammar and you know it so well that you can teach it to someone else, I'd be more than happy to teach you the maritime mechanics of salvage, the flag mechanics, the banking mechanics, the postal mechanics. be more than happy to share that stuff with you. But I will never share it with you if you don't have closure on the grammar for safety reasons, obviously. How is someone going to build a construct on top of a foundation that's sand, that's unsteady, that's rotten, that's, that's incomplete? It doesn't make sense, folks. You got to have the foundation first. Got to. And I'm very glad that I've stuck with that my whole, the whole time I've been doing this. I've stuck to my guns. Bro, I, I could have really, quote unquote, cashed in on this if I wanted to, the way other folks have. But I haven't. Now, there's a downside to that, too. Definitely a downside. But we're not going to get into the downsides. All right, I feel like people are missing uh, the point on this poll. In all seriousness, how can how is it that no one considers that Romley Stewart is a part of the fiction system? That's pretty crazy to me. Oh, finally, finally, someone considered that possibility. It's always good to consider all the possibilities, folks. All right. Well, it's, uh, what time is it? It's 13.03. And the last comment was, or actually, it's not 13.03. It's 12.08, and the last comment was 11.57. So that means the chat has slowed down, and that signals that we are drawing to, drawing to the end of this stream because the interest in the comments and the questions has waned, which is the way these things work. I mean, I'm glad that I had Quadruple A and Shantavia and April in here. To participate in this, I'm, I'm very grateful for that.
if anyone has any other questions, curiosities about anything, live life claim, fate rip volition claim, port authority claim, domicile claim, feel free to ask. I'm here. As I've said many, 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 many times. If Colin David Eiffelwin Colin Miller was doing these streams in 2017, I'd have been at every single one. I'd have had a list of 10 questions or more to ask. I'd have definitely uh, taken full advantage of him being on here. Folks, let, let's get into a little scuttlebutt here, all right? A little birdie flew down out of that tree out there and whispered in my ear that Mark Lowercase K. Kishon Christopher is in prison. He's in jail. And he has been in jail for about a half a year. I'm not saying whether that's true or not true. But I can say that he has not published any new video content on the Internet that I'm aware of in the last six months or even longer, actually. There's been really no updates to his website or anything like that. Is anyone out there? know anything about that because i know that some of the folks that uh watch me certainly watch him you know what there's something else too that amazes me uh I can go to you folks' profiles and I can see who you're subscribed to. I can see what videos you comment on and stuff. And I just think it's, to me, it's I get great amusement when I see you folks that still subscribe to the Syntax Learning Center and you guys still go in there and check that stuff out. And that usually comes from the folks that are beginners that have not really decided to learn this grammar full on 100%. There's still questions in your mind. So therefore, you're still participating with fiction possibilities, which is cool too. It's your choice. But I find that highly amusing personally. So no one has anything to say about Mark Lowercase K being in prison? If Knoxville was here, I'm sure he'd have something to say about it. Oh, we have a tie in the Romley Stewart poll. It's a tie between he's got too big of an ego and he's afraid of the unknown. Now, of course, folks, we can't make a claim for someone else. We don't know if he's got too big of an ego. and We don't know if he's afraid of the unknown. And we certainly don't know he's a fiction system agent. But what we can do is look at the evidence. Look at the way that he reacts to things. Look at how he handles things. And from my position because I was the one with firsthand knowledge in communication with him, the way that he responded, his kuleana, was very defensive, number one. 
It was very standoffish. And he really didn't want anything to do with talking with me. He was more talking to me, but not with me. And that's cool, too. Either which way, although he is a very engaging personality in video, he's definitely not someone I'd want to contract with or would even trust to contract with. Ain't no way I'd contract with a, with a personality like that, with a man like that. Mm -mm. All right, good, good. As always, I will take what we got right here. I will put it in the members section. Uh, are there any members actually viewing right now? There aren't. That's a first. Usually, usually we do have members participating here, but not today. You're welcome, Shantavia. Thanks for thanks for uh, coming aboard and thanks for your questions. I appreciate it. As I was saying, I'm going to take this video, put it in its unedited form in the members section. So members can watch this as many times as they want to. And I will try to edit it, take the best pieces out, and then publish that publicly. Thanks again.